welcome to Life as a Cancer Survivor. In this video, I'll talk all about what it's like to get a port placed in your chest. My name is Jelena, and I became a rectal cancer survivor on May 25th, 2016. I was diagnosed at stage three, which means that the cancer had spread from my rectum to nearby lymph nodes, but it hadn't spread to any organs then, as of then. My treatment included two different types of chemotherapy, three surgeries, and 28 days of radiation. It was tough, but I was lucky enough to be rid of the cancer after all of that. And I still have no evidence of the disease three years later. First, let me explain what exactly a port is and what mine looked like. So a port, it's about the size of a quarter and it's used to carry medicine to straight into the bloodstream. My port was a barred power port and I still have this handy brochure that I was given when I had it placed. There's tons of information in it and some great graphics that I'm not gonna use here shortly to help you understand a little bit better how it's placed and where exactly it is. Here's a graphic of the port I had and one to show you how it looks under the skin. Mine was placed in the chest, but they can also be placed in the arm. The port itself has a basin that is sealed with a soft silicone top called a septum. And there is a small soft tube connected to it called a catheter. The catheter is then placed inside one of the large central veins that takes blood to your heart. A special needle called a Huber needle is used to access the port. And once it's inserted, then you've got access to the bloodstream. Medicine and fluids can be given through the port and you can also have your blood drawn through the port. The port has three bumps um, on top of the septum so that the location of the port and where the needle needs inserted can easily be found. The port isn't sewn into place or anything, it's just inserted and then the catheter that's going into the vein, it isn't sewn or anything in either, it's just placed in there. Only a specially trained nurse should access your port because anything that's injected in it goes directly to your heart and it needs cleaned very thoroughly before it's accessed so that there aren't any germs or bacteria on there that can get in because obviously it would be bad if any of those get into your heart. If I wanted my blood drawn through the port and not through a vein in my arm, I had to go down to the cancer center to get it drawn because the blood draw lab that I would usually go to down the street from my house they only had phlebotomists there and they are not allowed to access the port. So I had to go to the cancer center and a nurse would do the blood draw there. Also, when my husband called the ambulance for me, um, which is another video that's coming up here soon, uh, the EMTs that came, they weren't allowed to access my port either. So they had to insert an IV in my veins and my arm before they could transport me to the ER. Now onto what it was like getting the port placed. I was told that I needed a port because the chemotherapy that I was going to receive, it had a high potential of damaging the veins in my arms if they uh, administered it through just an IV. And since my veins in my arm are already small and could sometimes be hard to access, I thought that that was a great idea. Port sounds like the way to go. My surgeon preferred to put me out for the port placement surgery, so I was all for that. I didn't want to be awake for it. Since I had just been to that same hospital uh, five weeks ago for my LAR or lower anterior resection, where I had like a foot of my colon and rectum removed, I didn't have to go in for the full like hour and a half long pre-surgery appointment. They just had a nurse call me and she double checked to make sure my insurance was the same, that my health history hadn't changed, and to verify what medications I was on. Then she gave me my pre-surgery instructions. My procedure was at 1 p.m., so she said from midnight to 1 p.m. I wasn't allowed anything to eat or drink. And that was it. Easy peasy. Finally, I was going to go in for a procedure and I didn't have to do a bowel prep. Yes! I had my port placed on Monday, December 5th, 2016, which was a little bit over six weeks after my LIR surgery. It was really nice to not have to wake up before sunrise for this procedure. My husband, John, dropped me off at the hospital at 11 a.m. and he had to leave and then come back because Mayel was in kindergarten and it was only half day. So he had to go pick up our daughter from school and then would come back. My IV was placed by noon. So after that, it was just waiting around. So I took this selfie. 
I went back just a few minutes late and the procedure went just fine. Afterwards, they took me over again to the PACU or the post anesthesia care unit. And once I started waking up, they brought in a portable x-ray machine to take an x-ray of my chest to verify that the port had been placed in the correct position. Once they realized that the port was in the right place, then I was awake enough that they sent, they rolled me into a recovery room where John and Mayel were waiting. Mayel played on her tablet while they were waiting for me to wake up enough that I was comfortable getting dressed. And she made this pizza for me and wrote this adorable little message for me. I will take care of you, mommy. She then put my slippers on or my socks on because my feet were a little cold. Then by about 3.30, I was awake enough to get myself dressed. But when I took my robe off, John noticed that the iodine that they had used to clean me up for the surgery or sterilize me, cleanse me, whatever, it had dripped like all down my shoulder, under my back. So he snapped this picture because it looked like they just like doused all of me in iodine. The incision was glued shut this time, so no staples, yay. Um, and they just put like a piece of gauze over the wound and then put a piece of square shaped tape over it, which looked more like saran wrap, as you can see. They sent me home with another prescription for the hydrocodone acetaminophen or Norco, but I wasn't really in a whole lot of pain from the procedure, so I didn't get that one filled. Um, this, it was more just a soreness that I was feeling, kind of like if you had just done like an extremely heavy like chest workout, that was kind of the soreness that I was feeling. So ibuprofen took care of the pain from that easily. I left the wrap on for a day or two, then by Friday it was time for it to be used for the first time for my pre-chemo blood draw. I always went in a few days before chemotherapy to have my blood draw to make sure that I was healthy enough to receive it a few days later. The two things that I know they were checking for amongst others were my platelets and my white blood cell count. Then, since they did it a few days ahead of time, I knew that when I actually went in for my chemotherapy appointment that I was going to be receiving it. But before I went in for that blood draw, I needed to prepare my port. A few days before my port was implanted, I went in for another basic chemo training class where they tell you all about all the side effects and horrible things that are gonna happen to you. Um, but then at that appointment, they gave me uh, a couple of prescriptions to get filled to prepare for chemo, one of which was, was lidocaine, which is a numbing cream. They said to smear a layer of the lidocaine over the port an hour before I was due to go in for either chemotherapy or for a blood draw and then cover it with some plastic wrap and leave it there and the nurse would take it off and clean it before the port was accessed when I got to my appointment. Then at the appointment, the nurse would take everything off and cleanse the port to prepare it to be accessed. Pro tip, invest in a roll of Glad Press and Seal. It stays in place perfectly. It sticks to your skin, but it doesn't hurt when you rip it off versus regular plastic wrap is gonna slide around all over the place. Press and seal is the way to go if you're using lidocaine on that port. So here's a picture of what my port incision looked like just four days after the procedure. And then here's what it looked like with the lidocaine and the press and seal placed over it, preparing for that blood draw. I was pretty nervous going into that blood draw because I was still kind of sore from the surgery. It had only been four days ago. So I went in, the nurse took the press and seal off, she wiped off the lidocaine, cleaned the port site really well, and then when she put the needle in, all I felt was a pressing of like her pushing the needle in. I didn't feel the stabby needle at all. It was awesome. Lidocaine is the way to go if you've got a port. I was happy that I had the port and the lidocaine paired together to make one less thing suck going through chemotherapy. If you could take a second, please click on the like button real quick down here for me if you enjoyed this video. And if you didn't like it, well, let me know in the comments what I could have done to make it better. Um, also, please make sure that you've hit the subscribe button so that you'll never miss any of my future videos. And if you've missed any of my past videos, well, you can click right over here and get caught up on any of those. Thank you so much for watching.